What's up guys, welcome to another episode of The Block is Hot. In this episode, we are going to be going over my top 25 lessons that I wish I knew when getting into CNFTs. And these are some nuggets here, there are some gems in here, guys. I really wish I knew all of this in the beginning, and especially since looking at my uh, spreadsheet, I definitely made some mistakes when I was first getting into this space, and recently I've been performing so much better with these different lessons that I'm gonna share with you guys today. So. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get in to the top 25. Lesson number one, guys, in the biggest mistake that everyone makes when getting into NFTs is they are emotional and they buy in on the hype. You don't wanna buy in on the hype and you don't wanna chase gains, guys. And False Idols, if you watch my channel, is a prime example of this. The uh, project just released, you weren't able to get in, it's going for three times the mint, and now all of a sudden you're freaking out because you think it's gonna go a lot higher than that, and you buy a bunch and you're FOMOing and you're like, ah! Stop doing that, guys. If you missed out on the mint in that situation, take a pause from it. Most of the time, you don't wanna be chasing these different gains and really buying into these different things because you can get burned like I did here and lose 3X your money. And there's situations where maybe it paid off, but it's not going to pay off nearly as much as you're going to lose. Uh, the second part with this, guys, is whenever there's a huge announcement of some sort of update, like these cabins from Ape Society, you're usually going to have a run up on that hype. That Those are people FOMOing, FOMOing in last minute to hopefully get into the project. You're much better selling on the hype nine times out of 10 and taking in that profit because nine times out of 10 guys, it has a crash afterwards. And if you were chasing that hype, if you were FOMOing into that new announcement, you're going to get burned. And that's how I lost a lot of money in the beginning. Lesson number two guys is to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And I know that kind of sounds counterintuitive, but you really want to pay attention to what everyone is doing in these different discords, in these communities, see what people are buying. And genuinely, or generally, when you do the opposite of that, you're going to make more money. So for example, when the Ape Society announced that they were having their metaverse cabins, Ape Society was at 1800. Then all of a sudden they announced those cabins. What is everyone doing, guys? They're buying into the hype, and then all of a sudden these ran up to 3000, and a bunch of people were buying, a bunch of people were buying. What am I doing during that time, guys? I'm realizing a lot of people are buying, that is the time that I'm going to sell and get out of that position. Then what happens is after that huge event, now all of a sudden everyone's selling and it went from 3,000 all the way back down to 2,000. What am I doing when everyone is selling? I am now buying. I am doing the opposite approach. And the same thing goes with Smooth Yeti Mountain Club. It had a run up. The run up was a little bit weird on this one, but after that snowmobile launch just this past week, these Yetis dropped down all the way to 200. Why did I buy five more when it dropped all the way down to 200? Because I know a lot of people are selling right now and that means that the price of this is probably the lowest it's gonna go and I also know that there's gonna be more stuff in the future. So remember, do what people aren't doing. Next lesson here, guys, is the floor is always the most liquid. One of the major problems with NFTs is liquidity, being able to get your money in and out of things. Sometimes it takes a while for stuff to sell and that's why, in my opinion, I usually go for floor pieces. Floor pieces are going to be the safest on the standpoint that you know you're going to be able to sell them relatively quickly. Whenever you get down to the super rare ones, yes, you might be able to make more money if you were able to get a really great piece or maybe you fell in love with that one more, but it might take a lot longer to sell it and you have no idea when you're going to need liquidity or if a project really stops, starts to drop and you just want to get out or if you think a project's going to drop and you just want to get out. So usually my rule of thumb guys is to buy near this floor because that is going to be the lowest amount of risk most of the time. Now what I'll usually do is maybe if the floor is 244 and I see one for 255 that looks way better, maybe I buy the one for 255, but I genuinely don't pay more than 10% of what the current floor is in 99% of situations. The next lesson is to always check rarities. It goes without saying, but a lot of people still don't check their rarities after a major mint and it blows my mind guys because literally you could be throwing away thousands of dollars over time by simply not checking the rarities. When it comes to CNFTs, you can go to CNFT tools and you can literally click on all of these different uh, NFTs and you can see the trait floors for them. Learn how to appropriately value your NFT so you're not leaving money off of the table because it's going to allow people like me to snipe. And one of the things is guys is sometimes CNFT tools doesn't have 
the information right away. That's when you can go to CNFT Jungle. CNFT Jungle isn't going to be 100% accurate, but it's gonna give you a pretty good idea, and they oftentimes have their rarities up before CNFT Tools does, simply because they do their calculation in a different way, whereas CNFT Tools is metadata uploaded from the project itself and is actually the accurate rarity scale. But this is a tool that everyone should be using when they mint something. Do not go and sell something without knowing how rare it is first. Lesson number five, guys, is to really understand how NFTs move depending on the news and just depending on the overall cycles. And I have a whole entire swing trade video that I highly recommend watching, even if you aren't into swing trading, because it's gonna give you a better idea of the, psych of the psychology of other traders. And at the end of the day, guys, we are competing with each other in a sense. You know, hopefully the block is beating everyone and hopefully I'm giving you the tools to uh, outcompete other people that aren't watching the channel. But just realize, guys, that there's a lot of psychology. We're not versing mutual funds or hedge funds or stuff like that. We're versing other people, which is actually, the, you know, the best odds. But essentially, guys, just to do a quick summary of this, whenever a project launches, this is P1. Don't buy in P1. We have no idea what the ceiling of P1 is going to be. If it's a good mint, maybe the mint price was 50 and now all of a sudden it's going for 200 and all of a sudden, like I did with False Idols, I, th I bought right here thinking that this was actually going to extend all the way up to like 300 or 400 and this is the absolute worst time to buy guys and it kind of goes in with lesson one. You don't want to buy on this run up because you have no idea where the peak is. Then usually what happens guys is we have a profit taking pullback and this is the P2 phase and in P2 phase we're trying to have this price discovery of where this belongs. So we're going to have this wiggle waggle here where the floor gets more and more tight. There's less and less disparity as people really figure out what the true value of this NFT is and then usually we enter P3 where it gets super tight. There isn't a lot of price movement. Volume calms down a little bit and then we have a good idea of where you know this price really belongs and this is actually going to be your best opportunity to buy. Not getting in at P1 where we have no idea where to go. Maybe you can get in down here in P2 but once again guys maybe you thought it was going to bottom at 150 but really it bottomed at you know $50 here or whatever the case is. So even getting at P2 is a little bit risky and that's why I like getting in at P3. Maybe you wait a week, maybe you wait two weeks, you see where things are going, you see what the price movement is doing and then you get in. And yes, you're going to miss out on some opportunities like Seal Society that happen, you know, literally like that, but Seal Society is a uh, an example, in my opinion, of taking a step back and, and not chasing hype and FOMO too much. And then usually what happens, guys, and this is going to be a whole entire different chart, but usually what happens is if, it, if it's a good project, they're going to have some sort of news event that's going to set this rocketing again. And then all of a sudden it jumps up again and maybe you sell up here. And, you know, honestly, it's a whole entire different chart, but just re watch that video and understand the whole swing trade of things and when the best time to get in is, because if you keep buying up here, I'll tell you what, man, you are just going to lose in the long run. The next lesson on this list, guys, is to really scale up. You're not going to make a lot of money just having one wallet. You're going to want a lot of wallets. You're going to want to potentially use servers in the future if your internet isn't up to speed. You're potentially going to want to link Daedalus to your NAMI if it's a speed drop and you need to be able to get those transactions in quickly. You need to scale up your stuff. That is what's going to separate you from making $100 versus $5, $10, thousand dollars when it came to clay nation baked pitches that drop alone i made eleven point five thousand dollars profit on when it comes to the snowmobiles i was able to get 28 parts and i was able to make seven snowmobiles that's at least 6k profit guys from one drop alone and these were drops that were back to back months so literally within the course of two months regardless maybe even just a month regardless of everything else i did those two drops netted me eighteen thousand dollars and it's only because i scaled up if i only got one snowmobile part, maybe I made 200 ADA, but because I got 28 of them, I was able to elevate that and scale that up. Too many people are just using one wallet. You need to get those multiple wallets, you need to get those multiple discords, and you need to start going heavy on mints that are going to do well and that you have a lot of confidence on. Number seven on our list is the most important thing when it comes to an NFT project, in my opinion, and that is the team, guys. Who is behind the project? Are they willing to work 
work? Are they willing to grind? Are they are are they an influencer? Do they have the ability to market? Do they have a developer on their team? Who is on their team? Can I trust the team? Is the team doxxed? I am a believer in people, and if I believe in that person, then I am going to believe in that project. That literally. I don't even have to say anymore. That is the number one thing. And if you see a project with a great team that is docs, that is willing to put the time and work in, or is willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do, like chat in the community, you know, volunteer, do different giveaways, market their butt off, then that is a project that I will have far more confidence in. And that's why projects like Clay Nation or projects like Smooth Yeti Mountain Club, where Keeper now docs himself and he's constantly marketing, those are things I look for because that, those are things that I can get behind and have confidence in. I know they're not going to just band in the project if all of a sudden the whole NFT space goes down 90%, goes down 80%, goes down 70%. Because the truth of the matter is, guys, is I genuinely believe a lot of the projects that are out there are not going to last. And you really need to look for the winners and you need to look for the teams that are going to be dedicated through thick and thin. Number eight is having a checklist. A checklist is very important when dissecting projects that are already out as well as projects that that aren't out yet. This is my personal checklist. Number one, the art. The art is the first people uh, is the first thing people see, and it's the first thing that people connect with. Is that art uh, something basic or something that has been done a lot? Is there a strong narrative with that sort of art style? Does it have some sort of cool colors? Do you think it pops? Do you think people can put it as their profile pictures? Is the general sentiment of that art is that the art is good? Very important. Team, I just talked about how important the team is. Marketing. Marketing is probably one of the most important things when it comes to an NFT project. You got to think guys, it's all about more people essentially buying this thing after you. Do you think that or that the exposure is going to increase basically. Uh, and I know that's kind of like a simple way of putting it and there's a lot more to NFTs, but at the end of the day, guys, are more people gonna buy this later? Marketing is important because that is going to give the exposure. Are they posting all the time? Are they posting once a day? Are they posting three times a day? Are they posting five times a day? Are they liking a lot of stuff? Are they retweeting stuff? Are they doing giveaways? Are they doing different buying competitions? These are things important, guys, and that is what I look for. Website, this one is very, very important for projects that haven't released yet. A website is the is basically the interface of a project. And if the website doesn't look good, or if there is no website, then I avoid the project. Think about it, guys. That is their standard. That is their expertise. My standard is extremely high for stuff that I do. I want the standard to be for a project that I put money in to be high as well. So if it looks like some cheap WordPress thing that took them two minutes, then I'm not going to be as interested as a project that looks like they put a ton of time into it and that I can see that they have some sort of skill or some sort of ability with. The next thing, engagement. It doesn't matter how many followers you have if they're not engaged. Are they getting a lot of feedback on their Discord? Are people chatting? Is there a lot of people liking their post on Twitter? If they post some sort of video or some sort of GIF, how many actual views are they getting? Are people putting a lot of emojis on their Discord? Is there a, a lot of boost on their Discord? That is important. Next thing, follower mint price ratio. This is important when it comes to new projects. How many followers they have to how much they're charging to what the price is. Think about it, guys. It's more about overall ADA. So what I like to do is I like to take the, the amount of ADA per mint and I like to times that by the overall mint. And a lot of projects recently have been charging anywhere from 250 to 500,000 ADA for their overall mint. So that's important to consider. If they have a large follower count, such as overexposed, like 12,000 followers, and their overall ADA is something like 400,000, then that is a very good ratio because they have three times the amount of followers as they do people actually, uh, as they do supply. If they have a one to one ratio, that's usually pretty good. Hey, you know, we have 3,000 NFTs uh, and Essentially, you know, we have 3,000 followers, but make sure to kind of put all that together. I wish there was a specific number for this. Maybe I could come up with a specific number for this, but that is super important. If they're trying to sell $500,000 of NFTs, but they only have 2,000 followers and they're trying to sell 5,000 NFTs at 100 ADA each, then I'm not going to buy that project. It doesn't make sense. And one of the things that happened with Chains of War, even though it was uh, somewhat profitable, depending on what you got, is they wanted 1 million ADA. That's a lot of ADA, uh, ADA for 3,000 followers, guys. And I'm honestly, 
surprised that it's been holding its price decently well just since that was such an outrageous amount of ADA in my opinion. I think they should have lowered that ADA, but you know, I can go into strategy at another time. Next thing I look at roadmap, is there going to be stuff in the future that continues the hype? The number one problem with projects that are just art projects is there's nothing happening in the future. People forget about them. The hype dies down and uh, basically the project goes to shit. I want to find projects that have good ideas and have things coming up in the future because those are going to be catalyst events that bring eyes back on the project and that's going to enable us to be able to exit those positions when we want to exit them or just have a good long-term investment. Projects without a roadmap and are saying, oh, we're just an art project. I love supporting artists, but those are not going to be profitable in the long run most of the time unless the art is just freaking crazy and they have very good marketing. Next thing, utility. Are they doing something unique? A lot of these different projects are using catchphrases. Oh, we're having a metaverse. Oh, we're having token. Oh, we're having a lot of, I look for stuff basically guys that is unique, that is outside of that project. And you guys will see when I actually announce my own project that I think we're going to have the most utility out of any project out of all CNFTs right now, because a lot of projects, all their utility is within that own project. Oh, the token is within our own project. Oh, blah, blah, blah is within our project. And there hasn't been too many people that have really stepped outside of that and really done something spectacular. And uh, whenever I see a project doing that, that grabs my attention heavy. And the last thing, guys, is narrative. I talk about narrative all the time. What is a story or what is a belief that more people are gonna believe in the future? What are connections or uh, that people are going to make? Oh, a lot of, for example, a lot of people that aren't into NFTs right now know a lot about Board Ape Yacht Club. It's the most talked about one, most likely. So there's a huge craze for ape stuff. So if we look at Cardano, what's the top ape projects? Well, we got Chilled Kongs, we got Ape Society, we got Mandrills, we got Ape Nation, we got Claypez that drop, just dropped. We have so many eight projects. So it makes sense to get into some of those top ones because odds are when more people come in in the future, they're going to read that narrative and they're going to know that narrative, whether they're new or they're from Ethereum, and they're most likely going to buy that project. So this is just my list, guys, of what I really look for. Have your own list and also add this stuff to your list. Usually this checklist right here is everything that you need to know, in my opinion. The next lesson on this list, guys, is also very important, and it was actually a mistake that I was making pretty heavy. I was getting into a ton of different projects. I was getting into a ton of different mints and I was losing a lot of money because I couldn't pay attention to the news of all these different projects. The lesson here is, is quality over quantity. It is much better to mint one or two things a week that are super high quality than trying to mint 10 things a week. It is much better to be in five to 10 really great projects that you can really keep track of than being in 30, 40, 50 different projects and having your money spread out in so many different areas. Find some of the major projects that you like, buy those projects and hold them long term. And then when it comes to mints, be selective because so many different people out there are doing these different gambles and you can end up losing a lot of money or getting burned, especially if the market isn't ripe for minting. And it, to kind of add a little bonus tip onto this is to make sure that you're adapting with the market because sometimes the market's best decision is to hold blue chips. Sometimes it's not to be in NFTs at all. Sometimes Sometimes it's to flip NFTs. Sometimes it's to swing trade NFTs. So realize the market and be able to adapt with that, but really focus on quality, guys. Next lesson is to keep up with Catalyst News. You need to keep up with these projects and you need to know whether or not there's going to be something major in the future. We knew with Chilled Kongs that there was going to be trippy mushrooms and they were going to make announcement about that and that these were going to soar because of it. Knowing Catalyst News or having alpha information before the majority of people know about it is the easiest way to make money in this space. Hands down, no doubt about it. Things like chilled conks, things like cornucopias, things literally I like Ape Nation. When you know something big is going to come and most people don't know about it yet, that is usually an amazing time to buy and you're almost guaranteed to make money if that's a big piece of news. So make sure you're keeping updated if you're serious about investing in this space. Number 11 is finding narratives that you think other people are going to believe. Narrative number one that I was just talking about. What is the top eight project on the Cardano ecosystem? What's going to be compared to Board Ape Yacht Club? Well, we got chilled Kongs guys and we have Ape Society. So we got to realize when more people get in, 
that they're going to, you know, basically go into those different projects. Space Butts, what's the narrative for Space Butts? Hey, this is kind of the crypto punk of the CNFT space, you know? This is the first OG PFP project. That is a very strong narrative. There are gonna be people that buy Space Buds regardless of the lack of utility just because that is the number one and biggest project. Sometimes narratives too, guys, can hurt a project. Boss Cat Rocket Club had a very negative narrative in the beginning. You either loved Boss Cat or you hated Boss Cat. And literally, that narrative of some of the things they were doing in the beginning has really scarred some different investors and it made their target market a little bit smaller. I still like Boss Cat stuff. I didn't think that what they were doing was too crazy, but just realize that that narrative has plagued them. And I still hear people talk about that stuff. So look and keep an eye out for these different narratives. Pavia, this is the largest project on Cardano by volume. You know, people are going to see this one a lot. This is the largest and first metaverse for the most part. So that is a strong narrative as well. Narratives are important. Think about what other people are going to think in the future. Number 12 on our list is to keep track of everything, guys. Keep track of your buys. Keep track of your sales. Open up a Google Sheet and keep track of everything. You need to see how much money you're making and how much money you're losing. And when you lose money, ask yourself, why did I just lose money here? What did I do? Did I buy into the hype? Did I sell at the wrong time? Did I misjudge a project? Did I think this project was gonna be better, but it wasn't? Why did you lose money there? You only know when you keep track of stuff. And that is going to be important to not only be able to keep track of your inventory, but see how much money you're actually making. And if you find yourself losing money every single month, then maybe this space isn't for you. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there's no idea if you know, if you're going to know, unless you're checking, unless you're doing this stuff. So pay attention guys and keep track. Number 13 was learn from your mistakes. I kind of put that in number 12, but yes, guys, learn from your mistakes. Stop making the same mistakes over and over and over, such as getting in at the wrong time. You are going to lose money from that. But if you're able to learn from your mistakes, you're able to grow and you're going to be able to make more money in the long run. Lesson 14 is to remember to have fun. There are millions of ways to make money out there, guys. Trust me, I have done a lot of different crap. Like I, it's kind of crazy. You know, I'm constantly jumping to different things. But the reason I do this right now is because I have fun doing it. And yes, I can make some decent money from doing it. But at the end of the day, I have a lot of fun doing it. I love getting into these different projects. I love strategizing. I'm even making my own project because I love this sort of stuff so much. So do something that you enjoy doing. At the end of the day, guys, what is money? Yes, it's nice to not have to worry about bills or, or go on trips or whatever the case is, but I really think that people overestimate money and they underestimate how important family is, how important relationships are, how important having fun is and really feeling like you're living a fulfilled life. I know this isn't supposed to be some sort of TED talk, but if you don't enjoy doing this and you're only doing it for the money, then I recommend doing something else. Being passionate about what you're doing is going to make you perform way better. And odds are you're not gonna get great results in this space if you aren't having fun doing it. And I would love everyone to be having fun and I try to make these videos fun and I'm glad for everyone watching. But at the end of the day, guys, you need to enjoy what you're doing. And if you're not, you need to look at other places. Number 15 is to get engaged, guys. Join different Twitter spaces, which I'm bad at. Join different discords and talk in the community. Message and DM different individuals. You have no idea if that's going to be able to secure you a whitelisting spot to a project. Or if you're in that Discord, you could get a whitelist and all that sudden, a whitelist for that project's worth $500, $600. You have no idea if you're going to meet different friends that you're going to be able to work with in the future and that you're going to be able to do a project together. They're going to be able to help you out with something or they're going to be able to be there to support you if they're going to get you a, a whitelist. Like there's so many things with it, guys, but get engaged. I know a lot of people are introverted, but you'd be surprised how valuable it is to join these different communities, to see what other people are talking about, to get the opinions of a variety of people. It is literally invaluable. And if you're not doing this already, you're selling yourself short. Number 16 on the list today, guys, is to not be greedy and to take profits. A lot of times when things are going up, we do not want to sell them. It's human nature. We think, oh, it's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. Make sure you take profits. I'm not shitting on SEAL Society because I haven't been enough in their 
Discord to really give an appropriate opinion, but this is a project that has been going absolutely crazy, and literally before this video, they were at 400 ADA. You need to find times to take profit. Usually I like taking profit before big numbers. 400 is a big number, it's a big even round number. Odds are the psychology is, is people are gonna buy up to 400. Maybe 400 is a good time to take profit, so maybe you wanna sell at 380 before everyone else is taking profit, right? Because then who knows if this is just gonna be a catalyst uh, effect of all of a sudden now it's down to 300 again, right? So don't be greedy, take profits. Those seven, those 28 parts I got on the snowmobile, I bought four additional ones, but I sold 11. Those 11 covered all my expenses for every single part, and now my seven snowmobiles are straight profit. That is a perfect example, guys, of me not being super greedy, thinking these parts are just gonna go to the moon tomorrow, and making sure I take some money off of the table because we never know when things are gonna go south or when people will take a lot of profits or in this situation where the price really deserves to be at. Lesson 17, guys, is to look at analytics and get familiar with analytics. There are a ton of different things I look at. I look at how tight the floor is. I look at how many are listed. I look at the 24-hour volume, seven-day volume, 30-day volume. I look at how many holders there are compared to assets. These are all important things, guys because that is going to help you be able to get in and out at the right times as well as know what projects to be invested in. So for example, in the last 24 hours on OpenSea NFT, I can see all the projects that have really been getting a lot of hype and getting a lot of volume. This tells me the top projects that are having eyes on it right now. If I look at the seven days, I'm able to see projects this week. What projects are doing good this week? Is the volume going up a lot? Is it going down a lot? Why is the volume going down a lot? Why is the volume going up a lot? Is there something I need to know? Did they announce something major? I can go to the 30 days. This gives us a little bit more of a broader thing. Oh wow, pitches at Clay Nation, 7 million ADA. That's almost double the second place, which is Chilled Kongs. Why has Chilled Kongs been doing so well this past month? Why has the volume gone down 58% in the last week? Are things chilling out? Does that mean there's going to be less FOMO and, le and less people getting in right now? Is now a time to take profit? Like these are the different things I look at. If I go to all, I can see the most established projects. I see Space Buds here, I see Pavia here, I see Clay Nation here. Does that mean that these projects are a lot more established and a lot more relevant and probably have a higher likelihood of being in a blue chip and lasting for a longer amount of time? Yes, guys, CNFT Jungle is another thing I look at. I love to see how many people are listing. If there's a high amount of people listing, it's gonna be a lot harder to move the price on some of these projects. And that also means there's a lot less holders. But then when I look at Clay Nation by Claymates, only 6% is listed, which means the floor is gonna be able to move a lot faster, it means a lot more people are holding Clay Nation. If I look at these Narus, only 3% are listed. Wow, why are only 3% listed? Is there something major coming up? Are the holders just super hardcore? Space Buds, only 5% listed. Pavia, only 4% listed, which is a super small amount. We only have 1% listed for these Cornucopius GTI Javelins. You guys want to know why? these GTI Javelins, there aren't a lot listed. It's because they're gonna be a whitelist like I said they were going to be. So what are people doing? They're buying right now. So if there's a lot of people buying, there's not a lot of people selling. And that's why you usually wanna do the opposite like one of the previous lessons and you wanna sell around now. Uh, but I'm waiting a little bit longer because I think it's gonna do better. But people are holding these in anticipation for the land sale. So because there aren't a lot listed, this floor is gonna move pretty quickly. And that's exactly what happened, guys. So that's just another prime example of different things I look for so I have a better idea of how much money I can make from this. 33% of mechs are listed right now. Like that's absolutely crazy to me. If that number is actually true, I'm shocked. Uh, you know, that makes me a little bit more bearish on the project because it means a lot of people uh, would like to sell their project if the project went to the right price. So that's something to consider. I mean, guys, like these are things that you have to be paying attention to. I'm constantly on these different websites. Another one that I like looking at is Free Roam. This kind of just gives a ranking thing and then when you go to trending that wasn't loading earlier, you're able to see if more holders are getting into the projects, if the volatility is high, how much has been selling, if the floor has been going up. Really like these three things right here, guys, are the three major ones. And those couple tips that I gave you guys are things that I ask myself literally all of the time. I mean, Yumi Universe going up 3,800% since yesterday. Why did that happen, right? Like that might mean I need to look into this. So uh, yeah, I could talk about analytics literally all the time, but definitely... 
check out the analytics. To kind of go off of this, we have our next lesson here, which is how strong is the community? Why does Ape Society only have 4% listed? Why does Pavia only have 4% listed? When I go to Clay Nation, if I can find Clay Nation somewhere, why is only 6% listed, whereas all these other projects oftentimes have 15% listed? Well guys, it's due to the community. The community is extremely important. Don't sleep on communities. You wanna find projects that have a strong community with a lot of hodlers. There's a reason that Clay Nation pitches have not gone down a lot where they really should have. There's a reason Clay Nation has been holding up price uh, even though when they should have gone down. It's because they have a very strong community. Strong communities are something very important and I underestimated how important that was when I first got into CNFTs. Look for projects with strong communities and I guarantee you, you're gonna have much better results over the long term. Lesson 19 here is that projects that are already out and already successful are a lot more likely to have future drops that are a lot more successful and that means you need to go hard on those drops. Example Example number one is Smooth Yetis. Smooth Yetis was a project that already released. They were already doing well. So when they have a second release of a project that looks good or has a lot of utility, such as the Smooth Yeti snowmobiles, you now know that there is a high likelihood of this project doing well. So that is a project that you should go hard on the mint on. And whenever there's projects that aren't whitelist only and you can get in on the public for their second drop or their third drop or their fourth drop or whatever the case is those are the releases that you're going to want to go super hard on. Things like the Cornucopia's land, things as the snowmobile parts, things such as the Ape Society cabins. You already know they have a track record. You already know that they're going to follow through. You already know they know how to market and you already know they have the community set in stone. These are the gems of Mints, guys, and these are the ones that can make you the big bucks. Lesson 20, and this is a big one, guys. Most people have a very difficult time having a long-term vision. Most people are very zoomed in and very, few, and very few people are zoomed out. I see this right now with crypto. Crypto's going to shit. It's absolutely crazy. I made a tweet today telling people to have a long-term vision. And if you believe in something, now is the time to dollar cost average into those different things. When it comes to CNFTs, Realize guys, I am tremendously bullish, but things can happen in the short term. Crypto's going to absolute crap right now. The stock market going to absolute crap. Have a long-term vision, zoom out. Stop letting your emotions take control of you. At the end of the day, guys, if you are super emotional and you're worried about these different gains and these different losses in the short term, you are going to lose in the long run. The long run winners, the people that really win are going to have that long term vision. And I know that sounds crazy coming from me because I swing trade stuff and I flip stuff, but I'm serious guys, having that long term mindset is incredibly important. If CNFTs dropped 80% tomorrow, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be buying more CNFTs. And that's why it's important to always have money on the sidelines, have money in ADA, have money in UST, have that in stable coins. You wanna be prepared for moments like these where things dip heavy and because that's going to give you an opportunity to be greedy when people are fearful. And then when people are not fearful at all and people are super greedy, that's when I like to sell. Once again, going over to the previous lesson and everything connects here, I like to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing and what everyone else is talking about and just having that long-term vision. I know for a fact with the knowledge that I have in crypto and just my vision on this that CNFT NFTs and crypto are going to be tremendously, tremendously, tremendously higher in 5, 10, 15, 20 years and is going to be absolutely ridiculous to get into prices right now. So stop trying to get a Lambo tomorrow. Stop trying to change your life in the next week. This is a process. This is a marathon. It is going to take time. What we can do right now is we, we can focus on learning. We can focus on improving. We can focus on learning from our mistakes and we can dollar cost average into stuff and have that mindset and have that vision. But when you get super emotional and you're paper handing stuff and you're freaking out about things, that's where you lose because that's when the more educated or the more long vision investors see the opportunity and they get in. So uh, yeah, I know that's a long-winded thing, guys, but I don't want everyone to make the mistake I made in 2017, 2018, where I sold the majority of my crypto and I'm still kicking my butt today. But lesson has been learned. 
and I will be holding my crypto and I will be dollar cost averaging into my crypto and I will be buying some of these major CNFTs for the long run, especially if CNFTs end up taking a major hit if the crypto market continues to go the direction it is. Lesson 21 here, guys, goes in hand in hand with lesson 20 and that's to leave the emotion out like by the door. You don't want to be super emotional. I love investing in CNFTs because I love the community aspect. I love having fun. I love the art. I mean, it really is just like the most fun thing in the world when it comes to investing. But I am very unemotional when it comes to my investing because the moment you're emotional, the moment you bought something for emotion, like such as hype, or the moment you sell something such as fear is the moment that you're going to get burned in the long run. Logic will prevail over emotion. Make logical decisions that are backed by numbers that are backed by data. Don't make emotional or irrational decisions, right? And I'm, and it's crazy. Like I remember my roommates finally come around to this when it came to crypto. I have that long-term vision. I understand the technology. I understand all of these different aspects of DeFi that go into it. So why am I going to be emotional and sell right now? Most of the time people sell on emotion when they aren't educated about something. If you find yourself doing this, get more educated, maybe take a step back from investing and learn what you're actually investing in. And then that way you'll have a lot less emotion to it. And I know some people are emotional because they're putting a lot of their money into something. And if something doesn't go well, then they can be very, then they can get screwed. Well, if that's your situation, then you just need to be highly selective and very picky and only go for things that you're very confident on. You don't want to put 90% of your portfolio into just one thing. You don't want to put you know, if you have $1,000, you don't want to put $800 into one NFT that could go bad. Or if you have 500 right now and you see Seal Society going crazy and you want to be able to make some money off of that, don't just ape into Seal Society or Seal into Seal Society just because you want to change your life. Take the slower approach. Take your time with it because I'm telling you guys right now, emotion is the killer of investors and you need to be a lot more emotionless and detached when it comes into these different things. Doesn't mean you can't love a project. Doesn't mean you can't be part of the community. Doesn't mean you don't hold one for the long term and sell some of the others when the opportunity is there, but emotion is going to kick your butt in the long run. Lesson 22 here is to diversify as well as place your risk in appropriate areas depending on your situation. What do I mean by this? Well, first part guys, you might have heard the saying, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Why? Well, if you drop the basket, all of your eggs are broken and now you're hungry, which I am right now I'm about to grab some food after this video. You don't want all of your money to go into just one project. If you find yourself having 99% of your money into one project, such as Clay Nation, such as Space Bud, such as Boss Cat, such as Ape, such as any of these, you are not putting yourself in a good situation. You want to be diversified. Who knows if something negative can happen to that one project and it goes to crap? Who knows if some allegation comes out or something negative comes out or, you know, they basically rug or they ditch the project or whatever the case is, who knows what's going to happen? You don't want all of your money in one thing. An example of this, I'm bullish on dead pixels, but am I going to put all my money in dead pixels? No. Why? Because if that game sucks or if people don't play it, guess what's going to happen to dead pixels? <laughs> right? You need to be diversified. The, the next thing to bring up here is you need to allocate your risk appropriately depending on how much money you have and depending on what age you have. We're all different ages here. I'm pretty young even though I shave my head, you know, whatever the case is. I can be super, super risky right now and I am super, super risky. I am very, very risky. I don't care because I know I can recover from it, right? I know I'll make that money back. I'm confident in myself that if I lost all my money tomorrow that I'd be able to make it back because I'm a grinder and I know that I can pull that off, right? At the end of the day, if I was 70 years old, I'm going to have to be a lot less risky because I have no idea if I lose that money, is that going to affect my retirement? I might not have time to outlive that. And it kind of goes with crypto. I talk about crypto in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Well, the younger you are, the more money you should have in crypto and NFTs because we can wait 5, 10, 15 years for crypto to take off again if we go into a really bad recession or depression. But if I'm a lot older, I'm going to have less of my money into crypto and NFTs. And I'm going to have more of my money in cash or safer options such as real estate or maybe Maybe I have more money in bonds, or maybe I have more money in mutual funds. Maybe I'm stable coin farming, whatever the case is. So sit down, figure out how much money you have, figure out where you should allocate your resources and figure out how risky you want to be. Genuinely, generally, the older you are, the less risky you want to be and the less money you're going to have on one specific thing. 
NFTs at the end of the day, guys, are high risk assets still. I'm still very bullish on them long term, but they're still high risk. If you're not someone who's comfortable with losing 70, 70 to 80% of your money potentially, then this is not the space that you need to be in. And maybe you're either over leveraging or you have too much money into this, or maybe you simply need to have less money into this and more money into other things such as stablecoin farming, where you can literally get 19.5% guys risk free. So it's literally an insane option, a cracked option that, you know, people don't really explore. But yes, diversify, don't put all of your eggs in one basket and understand your risk tolerance and how much money you should be risking and allocating to different investments depending on your age, the amount of money you have and and really just your tolerance. Lesson 23 here and you're an absolute trooper if you're still here. Hopefully you guys are learning some valuable stuff because these are things that I wish I knew and ever since knowing them I have been making a lot more money in the space. Speaking of spaces though, 23, explore all options in the space. A lot of people do one thing, they either buy it and they flip stuff, they either just hold stuff, maybe you swing trade stuff, but guys, there are a multitude of different things that you can do in this space alone. And then when we're talking about all spaces, it's like, holy crap, there's a lot. Like explore all those options. Maybe you're into flipping stuff. Maybe you're into like just minting a bunch of good mints and flipping it and getting your bag out and put that money into other things. Maybe you do like swing trading. Maybe you're really active and you can see these different catalyst news events all the time and you can find good times to buy projects and to get out of projects. And maybe you like swing trading. Maybe you're someone that doesn't have a lot of time and you just want to hold, but maybe you should, you know, learn a little bit about swing trading so you know when to actually get in and out of stuff. Maybe you're not into the whole entire, you know, buying and selling NFTs. Maybe you're someone that wants to be a marketer for it. Maybe you like making YouTube videos on it. Maybe you like having a Twitter where you talk about these different projects. Maybe you like interviewing projects. Maybe you want to be an affiliate marketer for these different projects. Maybe you want to be a mod in the group for these different projects. Maybe you want to start your own project, right? Like there's so many different options just in the CNFT space. And there's even more options in the crypto space and even more options in the entire world. So figure out what you like doing and don't just be set on one thing. Maybe you can do multiple things. I buy stuff, I hold stuff, I swing trade stuff, I make YouTube videos on stuff. Uh, I'm kind of like an influencer in this space a little bit and I'm about to have my own project soon. So uh, like I like tapping into everything. So uh, yeah, at least keep an open mind about things guys because there's opportunities in so many different avenues rather than just buying and selling NFTs. Like you can do so much more in this space than that. Lesson 24 is to pre-list some of your NFTs. A lot of times I hold my NFTs in my wallet and I don't have them listed on the marketplace. But I'll tell you what guys, you should list some of them on the marketplace if you're looking to get out at certain prices. Maybe I bought these mandrels at 130 ADA and I said, hey, if this goes to 250, I'm happy at selling at 250. Well, let's say these go to 250 and none of my mandrels are listed. Well, all of a sudden, maybe Maybe it goes below 250 because a lot of people took profits there, or maybe it takes me a year to list all these different man mandrels if the blockchain is super, super congested. So it makes sense, guys, to have some of them already pre-listed. The only time it doesn't benefit you to have them pre-listed is if a project randomly does an airdrop or if they have some sort of whitelist coming up. Then that would be a good time to delist them, uh, but most of the time it's actually pretty beneficial to have them listed so they're ready to go once the price actually gets there. The last lesson on the list today, guys, is lesson 25, and that is to listen to multiple opinions. I feel like too often people just listen to one person and they trust that one person too much. I don't want people watching my channel and literally just buying stuff because I bought it or because I said to buy it. I want people to be able to make their own judgment call and listen to multiple opinions. Maybe you're listening to me. We have Blake CNFT, we have Cardano Thor, we have Chronicles. I I mean, we have um, Dgen Travis, we have uh, Atlantic, right? Like there's so many different influencers just with this and there's a bunch of different Twitters you could follow. And then there's all these different people in these different Discord communities that can give their opinion as well. Like look at all these different opinions. Don't just trust one person. And the most important thing about this rule or about this lesson is to get there yourself. Be able to make your own educated decisions. I try on this channel to teach people what I'm I'm doing so they can do it themselves. And I love to see on the community discord that we have in the description that a lot of people were like, oh my God, I thought that was a good mint too. Wow, your whole list of mints I agreed with, right? Learn the space. 
learn what to look for. And then that way you can make your own educated opinion. And then opinions like mine are just bonus or confirmation. Okay, I looked at all these projects. I personally like uh, this project, this project, this project. Okay, I think Seal Society has uh, a, a lot going for it. I'm looking at the website. I like it. I like the marketing. I have my checklist. Okay, it checks off, right? I like this project. Okay, well, you know, that's my opinion now. Well, I don't want to just listen to my own opinion. Let me get some more opinions because maybe I'm not seeing something. Oh, well, Block just said he likes this project. Okay, I, I like Block's opinion. I trust Block's opinion. I'm not going to blindly listen to Block, but I do like what he has to say. So, okay, that gives me a little bit more confidence here. Oh, I saw Cardano Thor do an interview and Cardano Thor liked it. Oh, well, that gives me more confidence. Oh, some people in the Discord, they really like it. Oh, okay. Oh, well, this guy said, oh, the team is a little sketch. Well, let me look into that. Let me not just trust this dude blindly. Let me do my own research and let me confirm what he has to say. And let me not just shut it down and be closed minded because I'm too like focused on this project being good, but let me genuinely see what he has to say. And then that's going to give me an additional uh, perspective or insight of the project. And then I can take all of that together and ultimately come up with my own decision. And before you make that decision, have a game plan. Are you going to flip it? Are you going to swing trade? Are you going to hold it for the long term? Do you think there's some catalyst news in the future that'll be a good time to sell? Is there something major in a roadmap? Like these are things that you need to be thinking about guys. When I make these different videos, like a v, most of the time, it is just my opinion. And I can be wrong. Uh, you know, sometimes I am wrong, uh, but you know, I have a decent checklist. And I'm a decent opinion to listen to, but I shouldn't be the only opinion. And that's the main thing that I want to, you know, stress with this last lesson here is learn what you're doing yourself. Simply use me and other people as tools, not as the main reason you're doing something. But uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up the 25 lessons, guys. I really wish I knew this when getting started. I really wish someone had told me these different things because I've literally been so much in the profit, especially over the past two months than I did when I was first getting heavily invested. And it's like, oh my God, dude, if I had known some of this stuff, I would literally have tens of thousands of more dollars right now. Uh, but I didn't. But you know what I did? I learned and I got better and I improved. And lesson 26 here, just a bonus, is to always improve, always grow, always learn to be better, learn from your mistakes, figure out what works, what doesn't work, and dissect every single error you make. Because over time, and like I just said on my tweet, I have been getting better at this and it's only through time, it's only through experience, and it's only through me analyzing every single decision I make and dissecting what I did right and what I did wrong and what I can do the next time. And then eventually you're gonna be very well-rounded in this space and you're gonna do pretty well, even in the long term, if you're you're just holding stuff guys if you you know can identify good projects but uh, yeah that pretty much sums up the lessons though hope you enjoyed it um exciting stuff coming this month still hope the lessons helped i don't know i'm just rambling on at this point i just hope you guys you know enjoyed the lessons i know this video is going to end up being a lot longer than i wanted it to but i really wanted to stress these lessons and and see how many people this can help but uh yeah catch you guys on the next one